Okay. Right, yeah. Oh. Not from the top, right? Doesn't look like anybody. Okay. I look like someone was in the waiting room, but it says joining. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. No, uh, that was taken off for that one. Yeah. Do you have any correspondence? Okay, no correspondence. Next agenda item is approval of minutes. Uh, let's begin with the minutes from the regular meeting of Tuesday, September 14th. As the minutes were distributed in advance, I entertain a motion to accept as submitted. So yep. moved. I'll second it. Any discussion? I'm not hearing or seeing any discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? On to the next meeting minutes. And these are the minutes of the special meeting from Tuesday, September 28th. Thank you. Again, as the minutes were distributed in advance, entertain a motion to accept as submitted. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, no. All right, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Session. Moving on to the next agenda item, park and rec. Maybe just to tee this up, uh, tee this up. If you recall, in fiscal year 21, it was round figures, about 600,000 in the park and rec programs. Because of COVID, we weren't able to run, park and rec was not able to run some of those programs. So the money was collected from the taxpayers in fiscal year 21 and not expended or expensed and fell down through to the general fund. What we did for fiscal year 22, the year we are in now, is we took 100,000 out of the program account, expecting Eileen to be able to come to us at some point and tell us whether or not she was gonna be able to run the programs in this fiscal year, this fiscal year 22. So with that, it's kind of the setup, right? We have the money in the general fund. It would be in effect having the taxpayer pay for $100,000 of programs once instead of twice, if we had put it again in this year's budget. So that's the setup. Over to Eileen. Do you want to, well, uh, do you want to go straight to a motion? Yeah, yeah I have fine. Well, fair enough. If, if yeah. I might, this, this was a recommendation I, for the selectmen. So let's, let me go say very briefly yeah. that uh, the board of selectmen unanimously endorsed this. Um, I, I, not, not, to, not to parse words, I want to Try to clarify one part of this, though. Um, I I don't think it's a, entirely accurate to say in the previous year that this was money that was collected from taxpayers that didn't get spent because those programs are based on revenue. So you know the it, it's in the budget one way or the other, but the revenue wasn't collected because the programs were canceled, so nothing was spent. So it's it's a net net uh, level. So same thing with this programs are rising revenue is coming in to pay for it so by uh, if you endorse this program and lift the budget by a hundred thousand it's still a net zero change to the mill rate there's there because revenue is there to support it so it, it went down together and now it's going to go back up together so the taxpayers are protected so I'd, it's our I'd like to make a motion i'd like to make a motion to accept this request for a hundred thousand dollars from the uh park and rec yeah. Any discussion? Thank you. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That makes I leave for coming <laughs> again. <laughs> so the board's motion is to take the hundred thousand from fund from, from balance. Yes. Okay. Yep. And so, I don't want to parse words either, but that's where the money is. So let's. Yeah. Let's it's it you can do it either way. Yeah. That is what you guys talked about during the budget. So that makes sure. sense. Cool. Can I? Eileen, can you just tell us, you know, what's going on with Park and Rec? I assume things are good. Uh, things are, are we're, we're starting to run programs. Um, we have collected since July 158825 mm -hmm. and we anticipate the average income over the next months, you know, some months might be higher than others, but about 52300 um, which would give us a total of 629 5.4 by the end of this year. 
that's based on the average of the first three months. And we anticipate that partly um, March, April, May, when we start collecting summer camp and stuff for next summer, that it will be higher than 52. But we're you know anticipating at least 52 based on registration for winter programs are starting. Basketball started last week and, and we're um, have about 65 kids registered so far. So in, in a week's time, which is good. So, so, so Eileen, are any programs particularly tracking higher than um, um, or tracking lower? Our, our preschool program is presently um, for the first fall is at 135 number of kids for a week are using. And last year we got to, we didn't get to 147 until March of last year. So, and usually September is our slowest time with that programs, our preschool program. So I'm anticipating that number to be over close to 150, 155 when we start winter. Um, you know, uh, so, and the ones that are getting hit are the exercise classes that still require them to wear masks. People don't want to exercise indoor wearing a mask. So we're trying to figure out how we can do that. We may struggle in the winter, but then in the spring when we can start going outdoors, maybe off from outdoors. So Thank you, to wear, I, you know. I appreciate the work you're doing during this time. It's a little stressful, I know. And I'm collecting this information for the next pandemic. That's why. <laughs> I sure hope I don't have to go through another one. Thank you. But but it's really great to see the kids wanting to do activities and the parents wanting their kids to do activities. Like over the summer, we had two show theater shows, and we had clear masks for the performers, and they were fine with it. Like we have one coming up in November, and and the kids just want to do what they love. So and that's what we're here for. Great. And this is a real big news story, right? If you think about where we were in February of this year. Yeah, yeah. This is a win-win. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, next agenda item, consideration of the CAD and R RMS software for the police department in the amount of 100, and I believe it's 125.5. Yes. 500. Um, Turn it over to Matt and the chief. Well, I'm glad you caught that. It's 125,500 uh, that we recommend from CNR. This is a, an item that has been in the uh, long term capital plan for quite a few years. Uh, it's been building up uh, the need. Uh, many other departments, I would say the majority of departments, have gone to these systems, which leaves our officers. Uh, unable to communicate as efficiently as the other departments and unable to complete their work as efficiently. This is a technology tool that will take a lot of pressure off of uh, hourly work. Um, so the Board of, uh, Board of Selectmen unanimously endorse this and sends it to you for your approval, hopefully. And I'll turn the floor to the Chief if he has anything to add. Um, yeah, I just wanted to add, we, we do have a current system. However, we got it about 12 to 13 years ago now. And when we got it, we were supposed to be like the cutting edge one that came into the Northeast and everybody else was gonna follow us. We had a really good deal on it. Not, not my decision. Um, however, we were the only one in the Northeast to have this program. So anytime the state sends out a new update, like a new accident report form that came out probably about seven years ago now, our system would not adapt it. We could pay them and have them write a program so it will. You're talking about $30,000 just for that one program. This company is out of the state of Connecticut. They have the majority of the police departments in Connecticut, including Richfield. They switched over a few years ago, right, Brian? Yep. Yeah. Um, so when something new comes up in the state, they automatically have to upgrade it because uh, pretty much all their customers are Connecticut customers. They're only in Connecticut. And they branched out recently from Massachusetts. Um, it also integrates with fire and EMS, um, some of the paramedic programs that don't communicate with our system now will be able to communicate. The EMS charts, I believe it's called. And what's the other fire one? They did as a emergency, emergency reporting. Emergency fire reporting. Yeah, we have interfaces to both those applications. So it creates a better workflow for not only for the safety of the officer and the responders, but for as well as fire and EMS. Uh, with those interfaces to the third party applications that are already in place, already provides that connectivity. So it'll push the data over into their third party applications, saving a lot of time 
data entry and improving the quality of the data entry and time date and stamping everything. Um, so when it feeds everything also too, it allows the agency as well to go back and, you know, if you guys are going after federal grants or more grants for the agencies as well, it allows getting the, the data and the reporting that you need to apply for those grants as well, a lot easier uh, for the administration as well. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Jamie from NextGen. For anybody that wasn't uh, on on the last meeting, I'm, I apologize. Didn't want to. Just wanted to add lib to um, to the floor. Thank you very much. That was helpful. Bob, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the 125,500 for the new CAD system for the police department. With, with the bid waiver, though. It, allow a bid. Yeah, waiver. with the yeah, right. with the bid waiver that the board of selectmen voted on the other night. In the amount of 125,500. So, any, so Chief, uh, in, in terms of the new programming, I saw that tick writing, uh, ticket writing is going to be much more efficient. Uh, I heard that reporting is going to be more efficient. What other ways do you, do you see efficiency coming out here in terms of, you know, time for the officers to do well, more so valuable business? It's not even for the officers. It's for the officers, number one, uh, they'll be able to do their accident reports out on the scene there's an accident while they're waiting for the tow truck to come out they can start putting in their information starting to report in the car instead of having to wait for the tow truck drive to the station log on the inside computer and then do the accident report as far as tickets go the state is going to start mandating it in a couple of years that you have to enter all your tickets electronically um so we will slowly phase in doing electronic tickets in the cars now we have the mechanism to do it our old system that we currently have another thirty to forty thousand dollar upgrade to be able to do that. Um, this is the next wave when we start getting new police cars. We have to start looking at buying printers for the police cars that can print out the tickets. So we will eventually go to electronic tickets, which, when you're out in the street and you're taking fifteen minutes to write a handwritten ticket, compared to go do 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 and you scan the license and all the information goes in, you're in and out of a call now. In a matter of minutes compared to 15 minutes yeah days. and it's it's an improvement too um there's a lot of case studies that were done that officers issuing a ticket were hit by another motorist <laughs> while trying to give the other motorist um a ticket so e-ticket um has been in place with next gen since uh 20 late 2010 into 2011 uh so almost all the agencies, except for a couple that are, you know, uh, still trying to get more printers inside their fleet. Um, the synergy behind NextGen in the state and then what we do, we have so many automations that are going on in the background that the chief doesn't have with his present system right now with court disposition downloads, as well as um, the infraction part that he's talking about, like when you guys get the um, printers inside uh, the cruisers our software application automatically has e-ticket built into it. Um, it will connect to the state site and download any new statute fines or anything for the officer automatically upon every shift. So it automatically checks those databases and then preloads everything. So if their cell phone fine went up in the last 24 hours, um, it's automatically loaded inside next gen. Um, all the MAMUC requirements, these are things that you guys might not know the terms are, but there's so much that goes on on the backside for the police side with their NIBRS compliance, um, the new state, like I said, MAMUC forms, those are forms that when they're submitting their PR1s, their accident forms, there's all this data that's being collected um, from the officer, but then using downwind as well, which actually affects everything, safety of cars, designs, everything that's outside of next gen, <laughs> it's feeding other applications. Uh, downwind as well too. Uh, but it's a huge savings of time case management for the officers as well too, for any of the reports or the supervisors. Um, it's just, there's a lot of automation in the application and it saves the officer a lot of time from data entry, keeps them more abreast. And as well as for fire and EMS too, the history is right at their fingertips when they're actually dispatching those calls too as well. So it's, it's really a collective a universal system that serves all the public safety entities and keeps everybody safer while keeping the productivity levels upward um, and not being daunted down by the administrative tasks that they have to do on a daily basis on their daily missions. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, for any further, this we have a motion. Do we have an second yet? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to second the motion. I'm very familiar with the program. It's an excellent program. Good customer service. I do all the NIVRs beforehand. Oh, okay. Go. I say we move the question. Now we've got a motion. We've got a second. Got a second. Is there any discussion? Further discussion? I just have a question. With all that functionality, is the hardware that we have in the cars going to be suitable? Yes, the hardware in the cars is going to be suitable. We do have to do some upgrades in the computer system server, but we have money in the operating budget that will handle that for them this year. And, and printers. That's something in the future that will the, 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 the state actually has a grant out state. where if you agree to go to e ticket, they'll provide you the equipment right. for your cruisers because you're trying to get all the police departments to go. To, we're one of the last of the holdouts, so we're not going to go until they make us, but they are going to give you the equipment. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, any more discussion? Something else? So, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, next. Thank you. I should have brought my son to the meeting. Can I go? All right, next agenda item is the consideration of the Stony Hill fire truck proposal. I'd like to start this with a motion. If we be second it to begin the discussion. All right, here's my motion. Because additional information is needed to determine whether the town of Bethel's capital non-recurring fund has a sufficient balance, or alternatively, whether the town needs to borrow funds to pay for the Stone Hill Fire Department quint apparatus, the Board of Finance requests that the Fire Commission take the time necessary to assess the near-term capital needs and priorities of the town of Bethel's fire departments, so that the Board of Finance can make a fully informed and prudent financial determination with respect to the fire truck proposal. Parenthetical, typical longer, a typical longer term apparatus replacement plan would be most helpful to making this financial determination. Second. So, uh, I have some comments to make, but before I make my comments, I wanted to well, make comments from the board. I mean, I, I read the letter from, uh, the fire commission and it seems like they're just asking for a little more time so i think that that's reasonable and <laughs> you know that they want and that they need i think you know there is a need for you know a new truck i just you know i'm not an expert in fire apparatus you guys know that you know so i think you know, with the fire commission and working with the chief and whoever, you know, they'll come back to the board and make, you know, side recommendations. But I don't think it's that people are feeling that you guys don't need a truck at all. You know, I just think they're saying give it a little more time and just sort of make sure we're uh, doing the right thing. And, you know, for me, I, I probably won't be here to uh, a decision, but. You know, I know we're saying the purchase is 950000 but I know that doesn't include, you know, the equipment necessary to go on it. So my hope would be that we just all agree to send it to referendum, just so everyone has a say. And that way everyone can say that, yes, this was the right purchase, all the taxpayers agreed with it. And I think that's the fairest way to do it. But I appreciate what you guys do every day. You guys do a great service. So I just don't want anyone going away from this meeting thinking that you're not appreciated or you know you know deserve or need something we're just saying we're going based on the recommendation that was not last and just our practice has been alternating so maybe Robert you want to sure um I think um just like the rest of my fellow board members we absolutely support purchases of needed safety equipment in this town especially fire equipment, police equipment. The uh, question before us is how we're going to finance it. So we have a list that come to us every year for November 30th by our controller, which compiles all the items for the next uh, five years for spend in what we've done very adamantly in this, in this 
this term uh, is to make sure we have enough cash for these type of expenditures. Um, <clears throat> the last report I have that mentioned the uh, specific needs of fire department had um, replaced the uh, engine six, replaced aerial tonner, replaced rescue truck, uh, replaced tanker. And the various prices for those things were one and a half million or 1.75 million. Uh, 725,000, uh, 600,000, and um, 660. So the total for that was just under $6 million. Well, that's over a period of time. You know, obviously, no one's saying we're going to buy, buy these five vehicles at this time. But you know, anytime we have that type of expenditure on top of what we have, we have to make sure that we're making prudent decisions. So the wording in the motion we have is, what do we do in terms of a significant um, purchase right now in terms of over the next five years and we just want to make sure that uh per what the commission is saying was um, they haven't really given us definitive information in terms of what equipment needs they have what the long-range plan is and how we're going to approach this um we're, we're kind of in the dark. So although I think I and my colleagues want to you know, move ahead on this, we don't think it's necessarily prudent uh, to the town of Bethel to make a decision, oh, yeah, this one's good, and then not have a long range view of what's needed for this town. So uh, just like uh, my colleague uh, Brian said, we want to move but we want a little bit more time to understand the long range uh, cost implication of this and why we want to maybe uh, get some more time so the fire commission can present to us exactly that the go forward plan is. Uh, Cynthia, comments, questions? <clears throat> yeah, I agree with Brian on, on the, the same about the referendum because I think it's not going to be 950,000. It is going to be over a million. And I think it's fair for something that big to have it be a referendum. I know it's just getting under the wire, but still, um, yes. And we appreciate the fire department. But, um, they asked for more time, give them more time. And I'm fine with that. Thank you, Cynthia. Nick? Um, again, I, I've lived in town for a long time and, and I have all the respect for the volunteer departments. It's amazing what you guys can do. You know, I wish I could help out. I mean, I, I, when I see you guys drive by, it's just amazing the time that you guys put in. And I'm happy that both chiefs are working together. Um, it's one town. It should be one department. And, and I'm really encouraged by what, what I'm seeing there, uh, what I'm hearing on the streets. Um, I want to support whatever equipment you guys need, except we need there's a fire commission that's been put in place to direct what both departments i wish i could say one department but both departments need and it, they have to look at a big picture um i know there was a vote very on when they met and i then i watched the meeting the very next meeting and they all were confused what just happened okay none of these people were elected or served on any commissions or boards they have no experience I think they need to find out where the light switches and the keys are before they can make any kind of big million dollar decisions. And I would also support a referendum. I think a referendum, the town has always supported emergency services. What you guys save us as taxpayers is incredible. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I don't really have anything <clears throat> to add for the real value except to say that um, I remember one of the first conversations when I was elected to the Board of Finance four years ago was about how do we save enough money to buy new fire engines. So I just want you guys to know that the Board of Finance um, has been committed to that, has been thinking about that, has been trying to do that. Um, and I think it's just important for us to know, you know what's actually needed, what's needed across the two fire stations, how do we best serve Bethel with a new equipment purchase. Thank you. Sure. Everybody said all the great stuff already in there. I definitely agree with what it's been saying. Um, I always try to relate things to my own family to my household budget because that's how it makes sense to me. And if I saw car dealers advertising new cars and I thought I might like to have a new car, the right thing to do first is to look at how old is my husband's car? When is it going to need replaced? 
what kind of deals are there on that? And oh, I've got a kid just left the college, is she gonna need a car? So I wanna know the bigger picture before I can make a decision. And that's kind of how I'm thinking of this as well, is that everything that was said makes sense. The, the ladder, taller buildings, reaching across the target building, I understand that, that makes logical sense. But I wanna know long-term where are we going and what else do we need to get? Thank you. As with my board of finance colleagues, this was a serious issue. We gave it a lot of time, a lot of thought. Um, I actually wrote down some notes that I'll, I'm going to refer to, so please bear with me, but I wanted to go through it just to make sure our position was, was clear. I, I've been on this board of finance for six years now, and during that time, we've had the privilege of dealing with some of the biggest ish, fiscal issues ever in front of the Bethel community police station, school renovations. The Quint is just the latest big financial decision, a million dollar financial decision um, that you know, we have to consider. Now we've been through this drill before on big financial items. So I believe we think we know the best way forward. First, we have to make a decision that is consistent with our community priorities. And the number one priority is safety. If a community is not safe, it's not. And frankly, you guys put your lives on the line every day for us. And for us then to put you in the best position, we must give you the equipment to keep you safe while you keep the rest of us safe. So that's our number one priority. Second, our decision must be driven by the advice of subject matter experts, especially given the conflicting opinions regarding safety needs that have been offered to members of this board, in which when aggregated, maybe nearly four million dollars of near-term critical needs across both houses this board of finance to these point has done the right thing the last four years we've put budgets forward that uh, put money aside for very important purchases like fire equipment but we didn't put aside four million dollars some very important apparatus related <clears throat> decisions must be made now thankfully our first selectman showed solomon like wisdom in establishing the fire commission the fire commission is comprised of folks who are experts in the fire apparatus now unfortunately as the chair of the fire commission made clear in the letter to the board of finance the commission simply has not had enough time to research and properly discuss this topic so in conclusion the conflicting information makes for a significant financial uncertainty. In the public sector, such financial uncertainty typically results in a no answer. This board does not want to come to a no answer. We'd rather have the fire commission take the time it needs to do its work and to provide the board of finance the information we need to get to yes. So therefore, I am in support of the motion. Any further discussion? Move the question. I'm not sure we need to move, vote on the move, but I think we're ready to vote. So all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That brings us to the last <coughs> agenda item, which is the comptroller. Brad, by the way, Brad's First, the comptroller. It's going to be the best. I know it. Uh, I'm just excited right. everybody came out for my right. right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Been waiting all night. I know. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Um, we're three months into the year, so there's not a whole lot going on. Um, I'll start with the most important thing: our collection rate. We are at 38.94. Last year at the time we were 38.26. So we're good there. I'm not going to we're going to continue to do there. Um, revenue wise, the only thing really of note is in case you're looking at the intergovernmental revenues, why that seems like it's not on pace. The end of October is when we first get the first uh, quarter of the ECS money. So that's just waiting for the state to send it. Last year it came October 29th. I assume it'll come about the same time this year, which will be $2 million. So the October report, the intergovernmental, will look like it's on pace. Um, Revenue-wise, uh, expenditures-wise, it's all the things that Bob usually talked about. Probate court looks like it's over. It's because we allocated at the end of the year to the other towns. Uh, highway department looks like it's a little high. 
but they spent half of their road construction money already, um, which is typical. They probably actually spent more of it, but we've had bills for half of it so far. Um, so that's really the two big ticket items that are. Um, the other thing is insurance. They always make us pay a month in advance and our quarterly we pay in September for the October quarter. So that's a little high too. Any questions? So you don't see anything tracking irregularly. Everything seems to be on the proper pace. Correct. I like to make a motion to accept Brad's first uh, report. I think he could do better next time, but <laughs> well, I like the second. Thank you. My my colleague's motion. Any discussion? Yeah. How much better do you want it? <laughs> all right. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right. That brings us to the end of the agenda, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. If I might. Uh, Impose executive privilege, as I say. Uh, just two quick announcements. Uh, I forgot to mention the uh, the movement of uh, the revenue funds from Park and Rec will also require a town meeting. Uh, the board of selectmen didn't schedule that. We wanted to wait for you to vote on it. But at our meeting next week, we'll set a date for that. And just to give you a preview, we're going to come forward at a following meeting with a similar request for the highway department. To your point, because if you remember in the budget process. Uh, the highway department was reduced for road construction down to 500,000 and I committed uh, 750,000 of LOSIP funds, which the Board of Selectmen approved. Uh, we are at the point now where we have to do that to complete the construction for, for, next, for the following, for this fall and for into the spring. So we'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll have a motion to move money to, into the budget to adjust the budget and we'll have a town meeting, but maybe we can combine both of those things into one town meeting. So just as a as a heads up, that's coming. That's all folks. Thanks. Thanks, Pat. Um, Mr. Chair, I just want to say to Brad, um, if he could find it in his power to insert that R in appropriated. <laughs> oh, you mentioned that. I don't know where on this sheet it is. I didn't see it. There it's on, on the summary. It's the first page. And there should be a little R. It's only been there for 10 years. I've, I've really kept silent for a long time. So there's an R, appropriated, appropriated. That was a condition. That's why I voted for you. Oh, the header. All right. I'm just, see what you can that. do. See what you can do. Cynthia, we do numbers. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> ask, can, you, can you ask a letter person, maybe? That, you might have letter people there. I will fix that now for next meeting. <laughs> that's that's no, service. Sir. That's service. It's not Stratus report. Well, no, one arm is in the wrong one at a time. Baby steps, baby steps. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Good. Thank you. Good night, all. Good night, everyone. All right.